on air? <laughs> um, excuse me, he was taking a picture of me. <laughs> Sorry. Don't rush the man. Glamour shot. <laughs> Afternoon, Eldon. <laughs> I was talking to Tom. <laughs> it must be a morning meeting. Got to do I got it. Yeah. You, you got to massage the media, buddy. <laughs> okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Cape Breton Regional Municipality Special Council Meeting for Tuesday, September 28th, 2021. Uh, I will begin today by acknowledging we're gathered here in Unamagi, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. We as a council uh, live and work in the spirit of reconciliation, and I just want to say how excited I am that this afternoon we continue that education journey with the Union of Nova Scotia Mi'kmaq, um, doing a bit of work around understanding treaties and what it is we can do to put reconciliation in action. So very excited about that journey. Uh, I will now look for the roll call, please. Present. Here. 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 Okay, thank you. I just want to note that we do have regrets from those who are missing today. Uh, next, I will go looking for a motion, actually, sorry, for approval of the agenda as it's presented for today. Madam Deputy, moved Second. by Madam Deputy, seconded by Councillor uh, Ken Tracy. Any discussion on that motion? Question. Question. Question's been called. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, nay. Motion is carried. Thank you. Item number two, CBRM Ren, Creative Economy Support. So there are going to be a couple of presenters in this in this section of our agenda today. So we're going to welcome first, I believe, Tyler Mathis up um, to offer us uh, a really wonderful insight into the importance of supporting the creative sector. Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Mayor um, and Council. Pleasure to be here today. Sorry, I'm on camera. I shouldn't have that hanging off my ear like in public. Um, so, yes, as the Mayor uh, uh, mentioned, we are here, uh, staff, uh, along with uh, Cape Breton Regional Municipality Regional Enterprise Network staff, together uh, doing an overview of some of the creative economy support um, already provided by the CBRM, kind of what that means and how it works. And uh, we look forward to turning it over to an artist group and a uh, proposal that uh, has been circulating for, for a while. Um, so first uh, to that, where did this come from? Just a bit of a history. Um, back uh, in March of this year, um, email was circulated with a, with, uh, a, pr a proposed program that, that will be described a little bit later. Um, it was originally ma uh, mailed in, in uh, March 15th. Um, again, there was a bit more described in April of this year uh, here at, uh, at this location. Um, and then uh, in the past, things like this have been described in uh, creative economy uh, plans in the, in the past and in, in other jurisdictions that the group will, will show. So today, um, we're, we're going to, as I said, go over a few things. So first, some business support and programming that, uh, that's offered through your regional enterprise network. Um, financial support for arts and historic and cultural organizations through grants that, that is existing through CBRM and your programs. And finally, direct delivery of programs um, primarily through the Recreation Department and there are many uh, wonderful programs there. And, uh, and then we'll turn it over to, uh, to the, uh, our partner group here with the artists uh, as represented in the gallery right now. So uh, I'm here today. Uh, normally you would have had uh, Aaron Flynn, our previous Creative Economy Development Officer, that position is uh, currently unfilled. So you get to see me here today. Um, so it's a pleasure to be here. Um, a little bit of what the REN does uh, for the CBRM uh, on your behalf, identifying and implementing projects that'll benefit the sector as a whole. So in that way, we often are working with artists and organizations one-on-one, uh, -on -one, providing an advisory services to individuals and businesses in the creative sector. 
Um, one thing I don't have on the slide is our, our business planning service, which is often to both organizations and individuals wanting to forward their, their initiatives or their businesses in the sector. And I won't go through the, uh, through the various uh, recent initiatives, but, uh, but they are there uh, and more um, as, uh, as we can go back and, and see. Um, a bit on the plans about where they come from. So generally our business plans are, are influenced by two, uh, two strategies, the CBRM Creative Economy Growth Plan uh, in 2017 and, uh, and an island-wide culture sector strategy also done in, in 2017, which largely forms our annual business plans along with, of course, input from our partners both in the arts community and in our, our funding partners, the CBRM and the province. Um, one note on that as well, those plans obviously are being taken into account in the CBRM Forward Initiative for the Economic Development Strategy Development uh, and others that we'll speak about in a little bit. Um, a bit on uh, one of the recent initiatives for COVID-19 response, um, the REN partnered with the former Labour and Advanced Education, now Labour Skills and Immigration Department of the provincial government uh, to oversee two separate job creation partnerships in the support of work of artists during the pandemic. The first was an education project. Nine participants per, um, were successfully completed this past July, and out outputs were training, workshops, ways to transfer that knowledge to other people. And the second was legacy projects. So participants um, doing audiovisual productions, a book, traditional Mi'kma art, sculptures, and there, um, there's just an image of one of the social media posts that went out in October of Alice Sonuma, who was a, one of the participants, who's who's now owner, of course, of uh, On Paper Books. Um, here in the CBRM. Um, one of the participants of the Legacy Project uh, was J Ms. Josephine Clark, and I, I did run this by her, this, uh, this boat, so I, I, I took a bit of a quote from one of her uh, activity reports, I think the last one in July. And one, one interesting thing is from this job creation partnership, um, Josephine was able to um, get a, an exploratory grant from the Canada Council of Arts. So she was able to take um, this kind of emergency program uh, that was enabled by, by us on the ground uh, with your support and then, of course, the province with their funding um, to, to go forward and develop, um, land, land this new funding and, and move her into a new direction of sculpture. And so she has uh, her, her work uh, both in the convent uh, and I believe in Port Hawkesbury as well. And so I had mentioned uh, CBRM Forward, obviously a, one of our, the biggest things that, that we're doing uh, collaboratively um, going forward. Uh, this, this, our work in this uh, sector and other sectors will be influenced and directed by the economic development strategy that this council approves. Um, that is on track to be completed this fall. And, but preliminarily, we've done a lot of on the ground consultation with sectors, with the community groups, uh, with, with other uh, rights holders and stakeholders. Um, and there I just have an italics, kind of a, 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 a note from our consultants that, you know, the preliminary feedback is that arts and culture, no surprise, uh, will continue to be uh, an economic sector that's of importance and a contributor to our, to our region, not only economically, uh, but for our community. Um, and uh, they go on to say that leveraging this long history is part of the value proposition. And absolutely, we know that uh, people want to come here because we're a beautiful place to live, yes, but we have communities that are full of, of uh, things that are great to do. Um, and you'll see, you know, we all know Making Waves was, was awesome and Lumiere just happened. These are important things that uh, are great collaborative efforts. And with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Michael. Thanks, Tyler. Um, so just further to that, uh, the second piece of this integrated project, CBRM Forward, is the comprehensive review and update to our municipal planning strategy and our land use bylaw. Um, now I know Council has heard a lot about this over the last little while, but I just wanted to take the opportunity to emphasize again that we're going through months and months of public consultation and engagement on this project to try and find a framework that will really re reflect the expectation of uh, the residents here in CBRM. And some key opportunities uh, for our new development framework would be to explore ways to increase opportunities for entrepreneurs um, and provide a more flexible development uh, framework moving forward uh, over the next 25 to 30 years. 
Uh, now, I also want to emphasize the fact that the planning strategy isn't just a planning document. Uh, the planning strategy is really a comprehensive policy document for the CBRM moving forward that will give council policy to make decisions in all aspects, including the uh, arts and culture sector. Um, so again, I just want to remind folks to take part in the conversation. Uh, the input that we received in phase one directly impacted uh, the conversations that we were having as part of phase two of our public consultation. So all the feedback that we're gathering from the public, council, and our uh, community stakeholder groups, uh, they'll impact the policy that we end up with at the end of the day. And uh, again, that uh, planning strategy is uh, uh, kind of identified to be completed uh, December of next year, 2022. Um, and staff also just wanted to give council a little bit uh, more context on what is already being invested into the arts and culture sector. So as you can see, um, over the last four years, that investment has been steadily increasing with a four-year average support of over uh, $800,000 a year. And again, that doesn't include the funding for um, the uh, Creative Economy Development Officer, formerly uh, Aaron Flynn, as Tyler mentioned. Uh, we also um, provide investment into the arts and culture sector through the recreation uh, team here at CBRM. Um, our summer students and contract staff for non-funded events and our in-kind contributions of which there are many. So on the recreation side, um, we have the arts, culture, creative events program coordinator salary. Um, and so that position is really um, in charge of uh, rolling out CBRM Connect Arts program, and uh, that program impacts the community in three ways, direct partnerships, direct employment, and direct programming of arts and culture programs. And uh, I will note that Kirk Durning is here today to answer any questions that council might have um, of any of this information. And so, you know, a big part of that is also making waves, of which the community is very familiar and supportive, um, and songs in small spaces. Uh, and again, both of those are kind of uh, meaningful programs to promote uh, arts and culture in the communities. So over the last three years, the Connect Arts program has invested in the sector through partnership, direct employment, and direct programming of performing arts, music, theater, and dance, uh, film and storytelling, craft programming, and visual arts. Uh, the summer staff are inclusive of students who are actively studying and working uh, in the sector, and I know there's support uh, internally to uh, really try and bring in um, people internally that are active and um, uh, passionate about this sector. And as I mentioned before, there's a, um, a lot of in-kind support for community events throughout the year, uh, whether it's through Lumiere, Celtic Colors, and um, all the other ones that you see popping around the community. And so this slide is just, uh, again, a summary of kind of the recreation investment uh, in the arts and culture sector. And again, the in-kind support is not included. So you'll hear from uh, or a little bit more about the uh, arts and culture proposal coming forward in a little bit. Um, but at this time, uh, staff's recommendation would be to provide an issue paper for council's consideration at the November meeting of council that would provide policy options for further creative economy support. Thank you both. Um, we can open up the floor for discussion on this presentation, or if you like, we can ask our, our next group of presenters to provide their presentation and have a more fulsome conversation. Um, what is the will of council? Do you want to wait for the second presentation or have some conversation now? Wait. Councilor Edwards? Um, is there a, a motion required for uh, the recommendation? Uh, not necessarily. We like we can wait and have the next presentation and then have a motion come out of that, or if somebody feels obliged to do it now. Um, but there is more information to, to bring in before a motion can go forward, if you like. Thank you. 
Councillor Quinn. I was going to bring a motion up, but I, I'd rather wait until after the presentation, if yeah. that's okay. 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 Is that agreed? Agreed. Yeah, agreed. Great. Thank you, gentlemen. And now we are going to ask um, Nelson McDonald of Grassfire Films to come up and, and discuss with us and share with us the proposal being brought forward from CBRM artists uh, regarding a CBRM artist grant program. I, I just want to note too that we are well at our desks and respective seats allowed to take our masks off in here, but if anybody is getting up to have um, a little coffee or a washroom break, just to put your mask back on while you're traveling between um, destinations. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Uh, thanks for having us here today. Um, thank you, Tyler, um, for getting this started. Um, you know, it's one thing for a group of artists to come up here and make a presentation about, well, extolling all the virtues of creating art and uh, the importance of art in a community. But it's a whole other thing to have uh, an organization like the Partnership come up and, and do some of that work with us and for us. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm really exciting, uh, really excited about the potential to partner with the partnership on this proposal. Um, we'll get right into it. So my first slide is sort of um, what you would expect in any presentation about arts and culture. It's, um, <laughs> It's the, the, the conversation about the value of the arts. And we hear it in every study, right? You guys have heard it before. And the, from the municipal studies, we hear it in the provincial studies, and we hear it in the national studies. Arts is a big part of creating quality of life, um, of attracting newcomers, of retaining young people, um, of bringing tourists, right? Tourists are looking for vibrant arts communities and experiences. We know in CBRM we have amazing arts venues like the Hat um, in downtown Sydney, the Savoy in Glace Bay, Lewisburg Playhouse. And we have great festivals like Celtic Colors and Lumiere that Tyler already mentioned. And organizations like CBU Art Gallery and the Center for Craft and Design and the new um, Convent Artist Studio building in the North End. So um, why are artists missing out on arts funding? Um, that's kind of the subject of um, our presentation today, um, and it's something um, that we're going to get to the bottom of, and we're going to make a proposal um, for how to solve that problem. So what's the missing piece? How do we keep artists here? Uh, we all, of course, know in all of our communities many young people who move away um, to pursue careers in the arts, and that's okay, uh, but we'd love for them to come back right after their schooling's done um, or after they get some experience in some big cities. Um, and some of them we'd like to keep here. Um, so how do we empower these artists? How do we take full advantage of this great arts community that Tyler has talked about as well? Well, there's a gap in the community. We have to recognize that. So in Canada, living as a professional artist is made possible in part by provincial and federal grants, uh, such as Canada Council for the Arts at, at the national level, um, at of Ottawa, and Arts Nova Scotia here provincially. So these grants require artists to have an existing body of work, right? Um, so when you, when I have a lot of, um, I have a lot of artists come to me and, and they have great ideas, they have great projects that they want to make, you know, maybe it's a series of paintings, um, a series of photos, a short film, right? And they have a great idea and they have a lot of talent and they live here in our communities, but you know, they say, how, how can we get some support for doing this? And, and I have to explain, you know, what I'm explaining right now, that there's provincial funds and there's federal funds. 
but it's not easy to get them because you're competing against, at a provincial level, everybody in the province, and nationally, everybody in the country. And you're competing against established artists, right? Um, and, um, you know, it's very difficult to get that first funding at a provincial level unless you have a strong uh, work already, unless you have those great photos already, unless you have the, that first short film already, unless you have that, those first couple of plays already, right? So, you know, that if you're a dancer, you have to have, um, you know, those first couple of dance shows already. So how do you get to that point, it, you know? How do you get to that point provincially? How do you get to that point nationally? Um, that missing rung on the ladder is what we're going to talk about today. So we all know that creating artistic work, regardless of the medium, if it's dance, if it's painting, uh, filmmaking, whatever, it requires money, it requires time, right? Time is money, as we know. Um, many municipalities provide small grants to artists in their communities to enable artists to create and present work. So thereby building a portfolio, those first works, right? That first rung on the ladder uh, that can be used as a part of a funding application to provincial and federal bodies. So, um, you know, we'll talk about a couple examples later on in the presentation of municipalities who, who do that sort of thing. Um, I don't think you'll be surprised by the municipalities. There are municipalities that we know, cities we know as uh, strong arts cities in our country and communities, right? So right now, to put it bluntly, um, CBRM artists are missing out on the provincial and federal grants. You can go on the provincial website, Arts Nova Scotia, you'll see it. They report who gets the grants. And according to their website, only one artist from CBRM received funding in 2019-2020 for a total of $6,000, compared to 64 artists from HRM for a total of $543,874. So the performance of artists from the CBRM is even poorer in relation to Canada Council for the Arts grants. Um, that's not because we don't have the talent here, right, it's not. Um, it's because uh, we propose, uh, because there's a missing rung on the ladder. I mean, there's a lot of obstacles, a lot of advantages that you'd have living in a capital city uh, if you're an artist, right? Um, the provincial art gallery is there. The art college is there. Um, a lot of arts organizations are there, right? Um, in smaller communities, we don't have those advantages of being uh, like the capital city does, right? So I'm going to talk more about that. So here's what we're asking you for today, for a strong statement of support. Um, our proposal is to establish a three-year pilot municipal artist grant program here in the CBRM, an investment of 50,000 a year for each of three years by the CBRM, we believe, we know, uh, will transform the local artistic landscape. And the program will award, um, as we envision it right now, $500 to $2,500 uh, awards to 50 artists each year. So one yes from you guys today, it's 50 yeses to artists next year. It's 50 the year after that, it's 50 the year after that, right? Um, so that's a very small amount of money, right? Um, this is the trigger funding that will unlock the larger uh, long-term creation and presentation grants from the province and the federal arts bodies for CBRM artists. So at a provincial level, um, we'll give some examples in a minute here, but you might expect to get uh, $6,000, $10,000, $12,000 for an arts project each year. Uh, at a federal level, national level, uh, you could expect to get twenty, twenty-five, sixty, dollars $60,000, $100,000 um, at the national level. As I said, we all know the talent here in Cape Breton, right? Um, it's immense, and I don't think that we can expect a jury from Ottawa, Ottawa or Halifax to take a first chance on our artists unless we do so first. Um, right now, we send our tax dollars um, over the causeway for these provincial funds, Arts Nova Scotia, for the Canada Council of the Arts. We all do, all Cape Bretoners do. And in order to bring them back, um, I believe what we need to do is have a modest uh, municipal arts artist grant program here in the CBRM. That's going to allow our artists that rung on the ladder that's missing right now. I know that this is a program, Arts Nova Scotia and Canada Council for the Arts, that we can bring back a lot more money 
um, than Cape Bretoners are paying out for, right? We know our Cape Breton artists can punch above their weight. Let's give them the chance. I want to give an example. I'm going to give two examples. The first one is Allison, who Tyler already brought up. Um, so this, uh, she's, she's installing in this photo that you see here in the presentation um, a project on Charlotte Street for Lumiere uh, in 2016. She had a small amount of money for that project. Um, I think it came from Lumiere, a one-time uh, opportunity that they had. It was materials. Um, it, it, the cost was for materials and the presentation, it was about $1,200, so not much money, right? Um, to very quickly distill what happened next, um, Allison used the installation as a support material for her first Arts Nova Scotia grant. So that's the support material, that's the portfolio, right, that shows, okay, this artist can, can do work, um, they have some quality work already, um, we can trust them. Uh, that Arts Nova Scotia grant was for $10,000. Okay, so that $1,200 quickly turns into $10,000. And there's a lots of other things it turns into too, so let's talk about that. In the next slide, we see a graphic novel. Um, so Allison then used those provincial funds, that $10,000, to spend six months writing and drawing her debut graphic novel, uh, which you can see there. These funds uh, from the sales and exposure from the release of the graphic novel allowed her to build a website, develop a portfolio, and begin receiving commercial commissions. Right? So it's not just provincial and federal funds we're talking about. Of course, there are lots of other things that come out of uh, private commissions and that sort of thing. So one contract was to design the labels and branding for Sydney's uh, new folk cider house. And uh, I actually have a quote here from Jill, who owns the uh, Island Folk Cider House. And she talks about the uniqueness of the can design and how important it is to standing out right at the NSLC. So next time you go to NSLC, if you do, um, have a look at these cans. It's like a little art project right at the NSLC. Um, pretty amazing, right? Um, she says, we simply would not be growing our business right now without Allison on the team. That's the sort of things that happen when someone's able to work on their art full time. So uh, I have a little uh, chart here um, to illustrate it a different way. Um, but basically, if we can imagine on the left hand side there, CBRM offers project funding. And then artists are enabled to create work and build portfolios. And then CBRM artists apply for existing federal and provincial grants, and then they get them. That's the final slot, the final part of the puzzle, the final rung on the ladder. And they bring those funds back here, right? So what are they doing with that money? They're developing opportunities for commercial work. They're increasing the profile of CBRM and Cape Breton Island on a national and international stage. They're leveraging CBRM investment, that little CBRM investment of 500 1,000, 1,500, $2,000 turns into federal and provincial funding, right, that's coming back to the CBRM. And uh, they're creating original local content, and this is an important part, too, um, for art supporting organi organizations. Like, for example, if uh, a painter ends up doing a series of paint paintings, where are they going to be sold? Well, they're going to be sold at the Center for Craft and Design on Charlotte Street, right? Um, or if they, if they uh, if somebody applies and they want to take a workshop, well, they're probably going to take that workshop at the Center for Craft and Design, or they're going to be teaching workshops at the Center for Craft and Design, or maybe they're going to be exhibiting that work at the convent, or they're going to be renting a small studio space at the convent. They're going to be putting on their dance performance or their theater performance or their musical performance at the Savoy Theater, at the Lewisburg Playhouse, at the Hat downtown, right? So if we're investing in the artists right at that grassroots level. Um, the whole arts community is going to benefit immensely from this. And we're, we'll ultimately make CBRM more entrepreneurial, uh, beautiful, and attractive to residents and tourists to encourage and support population and business growth. I know these are things you guys talk about a lot at Council, right? And I really, truly believe that, that this will impact all of those pieces of the puzzle. I want to talk about another example, uh, another local success story. Uh, it's Ashley McKenzie, like me, uh, she's a filmmaker from the Waterford, um, and she had to move to Halifax to make her first short film. Um, she did that, she made her first short film in 2010 with a small grant from the Atlantic Filmmakers Cooperative in Halifax. Uh, her first feature film was shot in 2016, in one month, uh, in the Waterford, Glace Bay, Whitney Pier in Sydney, with an entirely local cast and predominantly local crew, and it was made up of artists 
of other disciplines, <coughs> musicians, photographers, videographers, theater actors, dancers, right? We actually found, um, I produced this film with Ash Ashley, and we actually found the, the, the leading role for this film uh, at a performance at the Highland Arts Theater, right? Um, it's Bria McNeil, and you can see her in that picture with Werewolf on it, the kind of poster image there. She's on the left, she's from Big Pond. And Andrew Gillis, whose shoulder is in the frame there, he's from New Waterford. Um, so that first film was for $250,000. That was provincial money. Um, that was provincial money and national money, right? From Canada Council for the Arts, from Arts Nova Scotia, from the Film Incentive Fund, from Telefilm Canada. $250,000, and it was spent here in the CBRM at restaurants in Glace Bay and in Whitney Pier and in Sydney and at accommodations in Sydney. And we paid, as I said, the cast and the crew was from Cape Breton almost entirely. So almost all of that $250,000 was spent right here in the CBRM. Her next film, and that was a very successful film, Werewolf. Uh, we were very lucky. It traveled the world. It premiered at TIFF, played in Berlin at the film festival there. And The New Yorker called it one of the best first feature films in recent memory. The Globe and Mail said, um, this, is, this is a bright light for Canadian cinema. That's pretty amazing. And Ashley, not surprisingly, got money to make her second feature film, which was shot right before COVID here in Sydney and Glace Bay and New Waterford again. It was $800,000, and it was spent in almost the exact same way at many of the same places. We were down at the hotels in Sydney, renting a lot of rooms in January, right? We were buying meals in January. We were buying a lot of coffee in January, right? We were employing Cape Retners in January, um, and that shoot went for 30 days as well. $800,000, almost all of it, spent here in the CDRM. <coughs> We're really lucky that Ashley came back to Cape Breton. Uh, a lot of our artists, as we know, don't, right? But she did. Um, she's inspired by this place. Um, she makes her films about this place. Her family lives here, so she came back. We're very lucky about that. I want to get back um, to the nitty gritty of how this is going to be done, um, this artist grant program, and talk about administering the fund for a second. It's not as fun, but we'll talk about it for a minute. Um, CBRM is already employing a creative economy officer, as Tyler mentioned, um, and that's who this funding should be administered by. Um, we're really excited by that possibility, um, and I say we, I mean the artists behind this presentation. You'll see um, the 80 or so signatories at the end of this presentation. And, you know, this fund has to align with the provincial and federal money, right? That's the plan. That's how we're going to design it, so that when someone applies to CBRM, funding for municipal arts funding, that fits with the provincial and the federal funds. It's going to be that stepping stone. And we're going to use that same standard as the provincial and federal funding. And the main thing is the creative economy officer will be convening the jury to view the applications, right? It'll be a diverse, rotating, and independent jury. This is how it's done at a provincial level and a federal level. It's made up of artists, right? So it's peer, peer jury review. Um, and, and there'll also be... Uh, the jury will convene each year, and uh, it'll be once a year. So the CBRM REN will also cut the checks to the artists and track and report on the progress being made. That's what we think should happen. That's a partnership that makes sense. I want to talk quickly about existing Canadian examples. Of course, we, we, uh, we want to look at what other municipalities were doing. And one thing we looked for were precedents across Canada. Of course, there are bigger centers like Toronto and Ottawa, you know, and we're not like them, of course, but they, they are great art cities, and it's, it's for a reason. They invest a lot of money in the arts. Um, and they, direct, they invest a lot of money in artists, right at artists. So... Um, I want to talk about those smaller places like Port Moody, Br British Columbia. 
And I think our core inspiration is really St. John's, Newfoundland. I talked a lot to artists from St. John's, Newfoundland. We talked to the deputy mayor of St. John's, Newfoundland about this program as well. Um, we have a recorded video with them if you guys would like to see that. Now, Steve Wadden and I were on CBC Radio a few months ago, and I made a joke uh, about the city of St. John's because they've had this program in place, uh, grants to artists, since 1998. And I said, well, I thought we were 30 minutes behind St. John's, not 25 years, right? Um, but we got to give them a lot of credit. They recognized this early on. They adopted this program, and they've had a lot of success for, from it. And it's for the creation or presentation of works of art in theater, dance, music, literary arts, film and new media, visual art, and craft. So the city receives about 150 applications each year. And in 2018, 50 grants were awarded, totaling $75,000. And the goals of this program are to support the artistic development of artists, contribute to the growth and sustainability of the St. John's arts community, and improve the well-being of the community. Well. I think we all think of St. John's, and we think of it as a place of arts and culture, don't we, right? We think of comedy, music, drama, you know, writers, uh, television shows, movies. Well, that's partly because they make this investment directly to artists. I, I talk to artists. There are artists on their list of funded from 2018 who are from Cape Breton, moved to St. John's, right? Went to school and then stayed. And it makes sense because there's a program like this. There's a strong arts community there. And I want to finish up um, by showing our list of supporters. And you can see them across the screen now. You can see them on your sheet. We have a great list of supporters, <coughs> artists and arts community members, um, people who represent um, arts venues. And uh, you, you know, you'll, you'll notice something, um, that the list includes uh, people from across CBRM, right? New Waterford, Whitney Pier, Escazzoni, Glace Bay, Lewisburg, and I can tell you there's young people and there's senior artists too. And that's really significant because it's our belief that an artist grant program is successful only if it reaches all across CBRM and reaches emerging and senior artists too. So when that list goes out every year, we want to see communities like Florence, Sydney Mines, Dominion, we want to see the whole municipality reflected, right? And we want to see Emerging artists, young people, but we want to see some senior artists too, right? Senior artists are in our community and they need opportunity too. And it's not too late for them to take the next step and get support from provincial and federal funding too. There are incredible senior artists in our community. Uh, an artist who I had a chance to visit just recently, Murray Gallant from New Waterford, um, incredible folk artist. His folk art is in collections, Art Gallery of Nova Scotia, Beaverbrook Art Gallery, all over. Incredible guy, incredible folk art, right in his shed in New Waterford. So this is a pretty impressive list. And I want to thank every artist and arts administrator and arts community member who reached out and wanted their name added to this presentation. And I want to say that it's, it's, it's pretty cool to be appearing here right after Lumiere Art at Night Festival. It's been here for 10 years. I mean, it transforms the downtown. Kudos to everyone who's involved in that this year and in the past for making that happen. It, it's, a, it's a pretty pretty incredible thing. And I would like to talk about next steps. And, uh, you know, we are asking for a strong endorsement from council today, I think. Uh, with the support of council today, uh, we can proceed with our partners um, to do the following. Finalize the structure and processes related to the program, including intake criteria, reporting structures, and impact measurements. Convene the diverse rotating and independent jury for year one to review the applications and awarding of grants. Create the marketing material and the application portal, right? So we need to put out that call for artists. We need to do all that back end work so that next fiscal year, if we want to give money to artists, we're ready to do that, right? There's work that needs to be done between now and then. Um, so I'm hoping for, for a strong statement today. Um, so our request is um, the CBRM mayor and council add $50,000 to the CBRM REN budget to be dispersed as a grants for artists three-year pilot program beginning in the next fiscal year. And I'd like to just 
have you guys imagine that the 80 folks who are on our list of supporters are here in the room. Of course, because of COVID, they couldn't be, but they're watching on the live stream. And again, I want to thank them and thank you for your time. Thanks. Thank you so much, Nelson. Um, before I go to our speakers list, uh, I just want to say a quick thank you to our staff here at CBRM for providing insight and the information that we need to understand how much we as CBRM are already do value the creative sector. I think that's an, a really important piece of this discussion today. Um, and also, just following up on Nelson's comments, thank you to each of the artists who took time out of their days. I know that is incredibly value, valuable and meaningful um, for you all to contribute to this discussion today and this proposal. Uh, I'm eager to hear how both of those insights are going to shape our discussion today. And I saw a hand go up by, from Councillor Darren O'Quinn. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to make a motion at this time if I could. I'm asking Council to support this proposal in principle, and I'm asking staff to bring a $50,000 increase to the REM budget deliberations by way of an issue paper to provide options for the creative economy support, and I so move. Second. So that motion was moved by Councillor Darren O'Quinn, seconded by Councillor Glenn Perouche. On the motion, Councillor O'Quinn. Yes, I'd like to speak on that as well. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you to Tyler and uh, Nelson and uh, Michael for their presentation today. Um, the reason I brought this up at Council today was this. I truly believe that it's time for the CBRM to do its part in helping the creative arts sector. The $50,000 we're asking for today is not a very big ask in my opinion. This money will be used to help local artistic people from all over the CBRM. The money would be dispersed through grants to aspiring musicians, filmmakers, artists, etc. The hardest thing for any aspiring artist is to get their first solo project completed. This money would certainly help many of these people do exactly that. A $500, $1,000, or even $2,500 grant may not seem like a lot of money to most people, but for these artists, it could lead to much bigger things down the road. This program would help 50 artists each year. We've heard some local success stories uh, today from Nelson, and I really do believe that the CBRM, by helping to the $250,000, there will be many more success stories to talk about in the very near future. Also, like Nelson alluded to earlier, if, uh, if this funding is provided by the CBRM, it would make it that much easier to access funds at both the provincial and federal levels of government for these artists. So I'm asking Council for your support in this motion uh, to support the uh, creative arts sector going forward. And I'd like to hear what my fellow councillors have to say in this as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Next, Councillor James Edwards. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> And uh, thank you, Councillor. And uh, I did have a, uh, a couple of questions for uh, Nelson, if you'd like to uh, come back up to the podium. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, of course. Naturally. Go ahead. So thank you for your presentation. Uh, it was very uh, informative and, and enjoyable. And uh, I was waiting for the, uh, the next page, as it were. Uh, uh, you uh, gave us some uh, uh, financial information there regarding... Uh, the the uh, two films and uh, um, the, uh, the the city of St. John's and the like. I'm wondering what, how much uh, the, the uh, funding generated. Uh, for, for example, you said the one the, the first film by um, is it Allison Yuma? Uh, Ashley McKenzie. Ashley filmmaker. McKenzie. Yep. I'm sorry. One film was uh, it, it cost two hundred and fifty thousand. The other. Uh, 800,000 and uh, it had uh, um, rave reviews in uh, New York uh, and other places. Do you know how much uh, revenue uh, those films generated? Yeah, I mean, um, we'll get into the weeds a little bit on the Canadian film industry, but, um, you know, here's the point about those films and what they generated for CBRM, because none of that money um, for either of those films, the, those feature films, uh, came from the CBRM. Uh, it came from federal funding, and it came from provincial funding, and it came from broadcasters, right? So those budgets of 800000 and $250,000, those films are going to be made somewhere in Canada. They're going to be made in Vancouver, they're going to be made in Toronto, they're going to be made in Montreal. Unless we empower our own artists to be able to tell their own stories and bring that funding back here to Cape Breton. Right? So the CBRM isn't going to invest anything in a film for $800,000. Ashley's never going to apply to this program for $500 or $1,500 or $2,500. But the next Ashley McKenzie is. Right? So we're just talking about sending the next Ashley on her way, the next Allison on her way. Right? 
Um, so, so you know, Ashley's films are available on CBC, they're available on Crave, they're available on Amazon, they're available all over the place, Sundance Channel, um, you know, and that's revenue that comes in after the fact. But the main point I want to make about those films is that's money being spent here, right? And um, most of the film industry is based in Halifax in this province, and in this country it's based in Toronto and Vancouver. But it's a pretty special thing when we can bring $800,000 to the CBRM in, in a January and drop most of it here. So, so that's the main, the main point I want to communicate on that. Does that, does that help? Uh, yeah, but I, I get that, and, and, and I'm, I'm certainly a supporter of that, the generating the revenue locally. But I was wondering if, if you had the data as to how much uh, those uh, particular uh, pieces uh, generated uh, uh, growth. So but what did 800,000 uh, generate? Uh, have you any idea? Uh, that film's not out yet. Yeah, um, yeah. But for a quick example, the uh, film that cost $250,000 to make, um, Ashley won the biggest filmmaking prize in Canada, uh, one prize. It was the Rogers... Uh, Rogers Best Canadian Film Prize awarded by the Toronto Filmmakers uh, Critics Association, Film Critics Association, and that prize is $100,000, right? So, so that's more money that's being brought back to Cape Breton, right? So, so, you know, it like I said, films are going to be made with provincial and federal taxpayers' money in Canada. It's happening every day. It's happening a lot in Halifax right now. It's happening in Toronto, it's happening in Vancouver. That money is money that we all pay taxes for in Cape Breton, right? Like, ultimately, all Canadians, we pay taxes. It goes towards this stuff. Um, and we're not going to get any of it back here in Cape Breton as things are, right? So when Ashley's able to bring a film back here because she chose to move back here and because um, her story's set here, um, that's an outlier, right? That's a real outlier. And, and you know... That, that's just the fact. It's an extraordinary story of money coming back to the CBRM that wouldn't otherwise come here. Okay, and, and, and similarly in, uh, in St. John's, you uh, uh, indicated the, um, the grant was for 75000 but you don't know what kind of revenue that generated? Well, I, I don't know um, the city of St. John's, how they track that. So, mm -hmm. so that's $75,000, just to be clear. Um, I think that went to, how many artists was that, did that say? So they, they wrote 50 grants, yep. totaling $75,000. So it's very similar to what we're talking about here for the CBRM, right? Small grants, that $500, that $1,000. And when I talk to artists from St. John's, you know, experienced artists, established artists, they said their first funding, their start in the arts was $500 from the city of St. John's, $1,000 to make that first play, right, that first performance. So that's what we're trying to evoke by that comparison there. I'm, I'm not sure if they if they track the financial impacts of that $75,000 every year. Which would be interesting. That's your yeah. time, James. Or thank yeah. you, I'm sorry. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Councilor Glenn Perouche. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, uh, Nelson, for the presentation, and Tyler for yours as well. <clears throat> We know, like you said, 50, uh, 50 artists a year with this, with this program. So over three years, we can help 150 young artists that are trying to get started to help fulfill a passion and a dream of theirs. And you use the word portfolio quite often. So this is the grassroots to help them get started so that maybe we can have uh, some filmmakers and, and of the sorts. And I looked at the list of uh, some of the people. I look and I see some... <laughs> There's some faces that I know, like Darcy Campbell, Valerie Walsh, Adam Young. If you type in Adam Young's name anywhere on Google, you can't help but see what the man has done for uh, lyrics and laughter, his own albums that he's, uh, that he's published, all the work that he does behind the scenes. There's one individual that has set himself up and is good to go, and if we can help other people with this program, of, uh, with this grant, the possibilities are endless. We have huge talent here in Cape Breton, and I know there's some of them sitting over there, and as as you say, you throw a dog a bone, and we can see what happens here. To me, this is a, this is a no-brainer. We spend money all the time, and $50,000 to help 50 artists with as little as $500, and uh, Darren O'Quinn alluded to it. It's, it's small change, but it could change people's lives. So for that reason alone, 
I have no problem supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Deputy Mayor Erlene McMullen. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just have a, a few notes here. And again, thank you, Nelson. Thank you, Tyler, for your presentations. Um, we, back in 2017, um, put in for the Creative Economy Growth Plan. So, and we then went on to hire the person, you know, to take care of it. The planning strategy review is currently under, you know, underway. The timing seems pretty perfect for this to be considered right now. And the idea of coming back with an issue paper for budget considerations, I think, is fantastic. I am right now 100% supportive of this entire initiative. Um, being the first, you know, rung on the ladder, one of the things my colleague actually pointed out as we were looking through the list of the names and the locations of the artists that contributed, we didn't see any from the north side. Well, perhaps by putting into this program, we will start to. Because I know there's plenty of talented people on the north side. I know they're employed with the hat. I know they're employed with the Savoy. But it's just an opportunity to, to, to put that out there. Um, but I do want to, OK, first of all, I am the most unartistic person you have ever met. I can't sing. I can't draw. I can't dance. I am not creative whatsoever. But there is a story I do want to tell where $1,000 changed my life. Back in the day, and I'm talking, I had to actually go to school to learn to turn on a computer. So I'm not saying how old I was, but let's just say I didn't own one, right? Um, like so many other people, I was young, I was a single mom, I had two kids, I was going through a divorce, I was 24 years old, and I ended up having to go back to high school. I was on social assistance, had no money, and I went and I took a trade. And what I had found out when I went in there, that if I was a returning student, it was free, but where I came back, I had to pay $1,000. I didn't have it. This one's a little like emotional for me, so and I, my voice shakes when I get that way, so I'm just going to put that out there. I made a phone call because my money was due on the, the next week, and I was A1 in my class. I was taking information technology. If I didn't pay, then I wasn't allowed to stay in the program, or I'd have to fight credit. And when you're a single mom, and you have no money, and you're on assistance, and you're trying to keep your credit clear, that's not an option. So I made a call <coughs> to a local person, and I'm not going to say who it is. I didn't know them, and I cried on the phone. And I said, I don't know what to do. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cancel it. I can't take the knock to my credit. I can't, you know, what am I going to do? And he literally said to me, no matter what you do, don't quit, because you need this right now. So I listened to them. To this day, I don't know if that person paid my $1,000, I don't know if I lucked out and they forgot to send me a bill. But the bills came around two weeks later and I didn't get one. And everybody else, the mature students, are like, oh, I got the bill. And I just said, oh, yeah, me too. And then the next semester came and I didn't get one. So I don't know who gave me that $1,000. I don't know if he wrote a check for me. I don't know if he made a special phone call. But as a result of me taking that course, the day I went to pick up my certificate of completion was the first day I started at Marine Atlantic. In those two weeks from that first day, I made enough money in those two weeks that I could have paid that $1,000 myself. I went on to Marine Atlantic. I ended up getting financial educational assistance through my workplace. I'm sitting here now as deputy mayor. I'm happily married. I never had to move. I have a beautiful car and a beautiful home, and it's only because someone gave me $1,000. So to say that I am not like thrilled at the idea of giving people that chance just to get started, that first month's rent, the ability to do that portfolio or to take those pictures or, or, or to pay for the gas or the accommodation to go to somewhere you know, up, up, up north, whatever it is you do, to be able to be part of a system that allowed that to happen, I would be forever grateful. So obviously my support is there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy, and thank you for sharing your personal experiences, too. That takes a lot of courage. Appreciate it. Any further discussion on the motion? Councillor Gillespie. Thank you, um, Mayor McDougall, and of course, it's going to be almost impossible to follow that. Um, if I was, you know, had any feelings or human emotions at all, I'd probably <laughs> find it very difficult, but since I don't, you know, so good for you. you know where we go from there, but, um, and I, I'll, of course, you appreciate when somebody shares a personal story. Um, I've been a strong supporter of the arts for the last 40 years. <laughs> I have always been a strong supporter of the arts, not only in my personal life, but in my professional life as well. Um, my, 
I have a couple of uh, concerns with this, um, and, and it's not the process or, or the idea. I think the idea is great. Um, but when we look at the, the numbers, um, and, and I'm talking about page seven, and um, uh, Mayor McDougall, I'm not sure who to direct this to, mm -hmm. uh, maybe CFO, maybe uh, Director Roos. Um, when we talk about the $878,000 that we're already contributing, and that does not include all of the smaller uh, points that are made there as well, um, I, can I ask if that includes the $100,000 grant to the Savoy Theater each year? I'm seeing a yes, okay. And does that also include the $80,000 uh, grant to um, Destination Cape Breton? It does not include that? Okay. All right. Okay. So I would say w w if you would probably take into consideration um, the other in-kinds and that, that 80000 that goes to Destination Cape Breton, uh, we're, we're well over a million dollars a year in, in our donations. Another $50,000 is probably not going to be the end of the world uh, for sure. Um, but I don't know about just taking that $50,000 and, and, and putting it into the REN. I'm wondering if we should start really suggesting to this council and, and, and senior staff um, that maybe we should have a fund and that we should start showing because as Councillor Quinn pointed out, um, he'd even said it's time for us to step up. Well, brother, we've been stepping up for years. But the problem is it's hidden in other budgets. And I think we do a pretty good job with arts right now. We could do better. There's no doubt about that. But I'm wondering if there's a way with that issue paper that we can come back and say, yes, this is what we've done up to this point. This is everything. And now here's what we're going to do next. I would like to see that. Um, I have said before in council that, yes, I believe that we should be giving that grant to the Savoy Theater at $100,000 a year. Um, and there is a historical part of that as well that, that Councilor Brooksweiger always points out to me. But we also have the hat and we also have the Lewisburg Playhouse. So, you know, maybe there's an opportunity with this issue paper to restructure how we um, give our grants out uh, when it comes to stuff like that. Um, it's, it's not a hard thing to look at this and say, yes, we have to do it. We absolutely have to do it. But at the same time, we also have to be very cautious about where the money goes and what the long-term effects are. Um, I'm a art collector, I'm a local shopper, and I do everything I can to support the arts. I'll support this issue paper for sure, but I hope that we have a longer version of this to come soon and maybe come back with our issue paper. Thank you, Councillor. Any further discussion? Oh, Councillor Eldon McDonald. Thanks very much, Madam Mayor, um, and thank you to all the presenters today. Um, I think probably everyone has the same story in regards to supporting the arts. I, too, also am a supporter of the arts. In particular, I guess, shows that happen at the Savoy Theatre, uh, the Hat, and our musicians um, very much support them in, in their uh, CDs and productions. Um, I guess for me, I need clarity on the motion uh, that it's $50,000 to be considered at budget discussions and an issue paper to come back from staff. It's not automatically that the $50,000 is there if we say yes to the motion, correct? So the motion as it was presented was that we as a council support the proposal in principle and ask for an issue paper detailing the financial obligations at budget deliberations. And that would come back at budget. Yeah, yes. but okay. that, we pr that we support the project in principle to allow the work to happen yes. that was outlined, okay. yes. Um, and, I, and I fully support that happening. Um, I use the same words as, as Councillor Gillespie. Um, I think we have to be cautious in how we do these things um, and how the money is distributed. Uh, I would like, if I could, through you, Madam Mayor, to uh, Director Roos, um, the 800000 that we uh, currently have uh, in various areas, $100,000 with the Savoy, as I already mentioned, um, can these projects and the artists that are involved in these projects apply to this 
800,000 or the sustainability grant in particular that, are, that I would be referring to, are they excluded from applying to that or can they apply and, and get those same funds from that, that uh, pool of funding? It would actually maybe defer to our CFO on okay. that. Sure. She okay. was waving with excitement to answer. No problem. I'll go, I'll go, to, I'll go to Jennifer. Um, thank you. No, actually, under, under the MGA, technically, the municipality cannot award grants to individuals, regardless of whether it's for arts and culture, regardless of whether it's for business support. We cannot award directly to individuals. So they're not eligible to apply under the municipal grants program, to answer your question. Okay. So we have supporters, and to my knowledge, we have supported artists in the past in some way or the other. Where, where would that funding be coming from? So individual artists, no. However, we would um, support <coughs> events um, like, for example, Lumiere oh, yeah. and Making Waves. Um, East Coast Music Awards is a big one that we support financially every year. Um, there's, a, there's any number of, but we also, um, a lot of the number um, or a portion of the grant funding or the money that is in that slide that Councillor Gillespie referenced is um, tax concessions. There's tax grants, capital grants, festival and events funding, and some limited operating support. The operating support, of course, is um, the Savoy Theatre for the most part, is the 100 grand that Council approves every year. Um, all of those, all of that funding is either administered through um, the tax grants are assessed under the MGA, uh, Section 71 A and B, on whether or not they meet the criteria to be exempted from taxes. Um, there's about $250,000 a year in taxes that are foregone um, under that particular piece of legislation, um, basically under two entities, the Center for Craft is one, and um, the convent is the other, um, substantially reduce their taxes to support the arts and culture community and, and the programming that those particular entities do. Um, all of the other funds are administered through the municipal grants program. Um, I will mention too, um, Councillor Gillespie mentioned Destination Cape Breton. The $80,000 that we give Destination Cape Breton annually is basically to administer the visitor information center located at CBRM down at the port. We do, however, contribute to a program that is administered by Destination Cape Breton that administers funds given by both ACOA and CBRM. Our contribution to that festival and events funding is 23000 a year. So those particular, that particular programming also supports events such as Lumiere or community festivals or Celtic Colors or any of those particular um, events that should really showcase what CBRM has to offer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Next on the speaker's list, we have Councillor Gordon McDonald. Uh, thanks, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Nelson and Tyler and Michael, for your presentation. Um, certainly is quite informative. And when I look at the um, the proposal from 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 the from you, Nelson, um, from your group, um, it, it basically is for me. It looks separate than what we're seeing in uh, in what was presented on page seven. Um, it looks like this here. Is, is for individuals specifically for small amounts in the in the tune of 500 to 2500 grant capacity to get them basically started off the ground and and then go to a place where werewolf uh, became a, 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 pro, a production and uh, I, I'm very familiar with werewolf uh, a good friend of mine Bria um, is the daughter of a very good friend of mine and uh, I know I had a lot of to promote that movie when it first came out as well because of that connection. Um, I, I kind of, a bit like uh, Councillor McMullen, Deputy Mayor McMullen, I'm not very artistic when it comes to that kind of stuff, but I certainly appreciate what, what happens. And I do have some friends who are very artistic. And, uh, you know, it's, <clears throat> it's always impressive to be able to see the kind of work that they that they put out and, and they can come up with, uh, you know, with and how their mind works to be able to present and, and do some of that stuff. Um, for me, I, I think it's a great opportunity to to be more uh, expressive and be able to have these artists uh, to be able to build that portfolio. Um, as I was concerned with talking to Councillor Fallon that there was no north side, north side uh, artists in, in, in any of this proposal, but, um, you know, through other discussions, we understand that there's you know, people in the from that side that work in the arts over here, and in, in, in probably in all the sectors, whether it be Louis Rue Playhouse, the Savoy, or the Hat as well. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna support this, but like uh, Councillor Elder McDonald, 
I, I'd like to get some clarity on uh, how uh, Councillor Quinn, uh, Quinn is presenting this as he's requesting us to uh, put a motion for the $50,000 grant today, or you're requesting a, a proposal for a staff to do a, a, an issue paper in order to get that money and how that money would be played out. I also like the idea that it would be, if we do agree to this, that it will go to uh, the, the partnership, or the REN, I mean, to be able to distribute the money, and, and you will have a, a jury or a ju jury to be able to, who would be uh, um, uh, in line to be able to receive those grants as well. So, um, you know, for me, I, I think it's a, it's a good opportunity, and, and I will be supporting it. Thank you. Councillor O'Quinn for clarity, and then Nelson, if you wanted to answer some of the questions presented by uh, Councillor Gordon McDonald. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Gordon, uh, really what I'm looking for today is like uh, I'm looking for us to support this in principle and just to get the ball rolling. I'm asking for an issue paper to be brought to the staff, and then we will make decisions uh, during our budget deliberation. So just today I'm asking for an issue paper and then just to get the ball rolling, and uh, I'm asking for council to give their support in principle. That's all I'm asking for today. It would be at budget deliberations that we approve the 50 grand or not. Thank you. Yeah. Nelson? Yeah, thanks. Um, for the councillors from the north side, I just want to say that I, I noticed that as well, but um, a few of the folks who are listed um, grew up on the north side. They're from the north side. A lot, of, a lot of the folks like Steve, for example, Steve grew up in Glace Bay as well, right? So, so there's a lot of folks who, who've listed Sydney maybe because they live there now, but they're from the north side. And if you ask them, they're north siders, <laughs> just to be clear. But it really truly is important to get the word out in each and every community and the artists who are involved in this are dedicated to helping with that the the partnership is really keyed in on that and we would be asking as well the councillors when the time comes hey make sure make sure to help share this too and get the word out we want applications from everywhere in the cbrm Thank thanks you. If I could add to that too, supporting the project in principle allows the group, as they had asked for today, to do that groundwork. So create the marketing material, create the framework for the jury and selection, make sure everything is ready to roll um, should the budget deliberations go in their favor. Instead of, okay, we wait for the dollar amount to be approved and then another year goes on before we can actually administer the fund, allowing that group to do the work now by supporting the, pro the proposal in principle. Is that fair to say, Councillor O'Quinn? That's correct, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next on the speaker's list, on your second opportunity, Deputy Mayor Erlene McMullen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I'll just, to the in principle, just for myself, when I think of supporting something in principle, it means when the issue paper comes back, if there's no red flags and we have the money to move forward, then that would be my intention. So if I say yes today, it means if we can, when the time comes without any, you know, then, then certainly. So just for anybody that might be questioning what's going on here. Um, so just a quick point of clarity, if I could, <laughs> Madam Mayor, through you to Jennifer. You mentioned that within the MGA, we can't give funds directly to individuals like this, but there's no issue with that doing it the way it's laid out by, by adding it to the REN and it being set out that way? Or uh, That would be part of the issue paper that we okay. also explore, just to clarify. Um, I, I would question why, I mean, there's no other municipal unit in the province that currently has this program, and I'm not sure why. I'm not sure if it's because of the stipulations in the MGA. Every, every municipality is tied into a REN, or almost every municipality is. So um, I guess that's some uh, further discussion that we'll have to have with the province and bring back in the form of the issue paper. Okay, perfect, because I do want to make sure we are within, you know, our, our legal ability. Um, and again, um, caution was mentioned a few times. $150,000 over three years is really not a ton of money. And I think that really goes to show the cautiousness that is put into this proposal because $50,000 a year, three years later, we then have a point that we can establish, okay, was there any return? Was Did anything happen over the last three years? I think that really goes to show that we are being responsible. We're not just saying, okay, $50,000 a year and we'll play it. You know, I think it shows that commitment on both sides. So I did um, want to address that. And another thing I really think this has the opportunity to do for the CBRM and council and staff is it just shows that we as the municipality also appreciate and take it like you know a advantage of the opportunity to be expressive and be inclusive to the youth in our community, to the artistic people in our community, to those that really want to stay here and make it better. And we all know when we walk down the street and things look nice, I love downtown St. John. 
I'm not artistic, but I appreciate every piece of art that I do see. So there's, there's just so many possibilities. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy. On your second opportunity, Councillor Steve Gillespie. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, Mayor McDougall. Yeah, and just basically the same as, as uh, some of my other uh, councillors had indicated. A um, couple of good, really good questions that came out of this uh, regarding the sustainability grant. Interesting to know that we can't do that. Uh, a good question from uh, Councillor uh, Elder McDonald uh, on that. Um, but as we get into the weeds on this, as we've just started to now, we're starting to realize, yes, there is a lot more money out there that we have been doing. I want to make sure, and I want to emphasize this to staff, that the more information that we get, uh, you know, we're, we're X number of $250,000, I think was the, the amount that you had mentioned, that just comes off of our tax roll. Uh, so, I mean, there is a lot that we are doing, and uh, Councillor um, or Deputy Mayor um, McMullen took the question right out of my mouth. Uh, where is this being done anywhere else in Nova Scotia? Um, you know, what would be the criteria for us to do here? Um, I, listen, I, I think it's great. I really do. And I think there's a super opportunity here for us as councillors to learn from this. What I also would suggest on the issue paper is maybe, and this is just my suggestion, that uh, a councillor uh, sit on this committee uh, <coughs> that awards the um, uh, funds just as an idea, just maybe to get some input because I'd like to see how this goes. Uh, and, and that can be answered by uh, Nelson. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Um, you know, I think we could talk more about that. I think um, it's going to have to be a peer jury of artists who make the decisions. But it, I think it'd be great to have a counselor there in the room watching, observing, and learning about that process because it's a very thorough process. I've been lucky enough to be on some juries at the national level for Canada Council and Arts Nova Scotia. You know, as an artist, when I apply to these funds, I know the artists are taking it very, very serious who are on the juries. They go through everything with a fine tooth comb. They go through the budgets too, right? <laughs> everything's, everything's very serious. They go through the work. They're comparing everything, long conversations, very thorough. So I think, I think there would be a possibility to have a counselor there in the room, but in order to align with the provincial and federal funding, we're going to need to make sure it's peer reviewed by artists. And uh, I know I'm out of time, but a uh, uh, point of privilege uh, on that, my clarification for that. It's not that I'm suggesting a counselor be on it. I'm just going with what the CFO indicated, that if this cannot happen through the REN, or if there's a problem with the MGA, I'm wondering how we approach it on another side. Always good to be on the right side of accountability. Um, next, we have on your second opportunity, Councillor Gordon McDonald. Uh, thanks again, Madam Mayor. And um, just, just because we're talking money and, you know, everybody's always wondering where money goes. Uh, if it is a $50,000 a year and this does go through and it becomes $150,000 over three years, um, I, I would assume that most, if not all of that money would be put back right back into the economy here in Cape Breton for, for, those, for that money. I don't believe that money would be taken. And, spent on the mainland anywhere or spent on the PEI or anything like that. I would suspect it's, it's all going to remain here in the CBRM. And I just want to point that out so that the residents, anybody that's listening, would understand that that kind of money would, you know, would definitely kind of stay here. And I'd also like to point out that when you were talking about the $250,000 grant and the, the $850,000 grant that was also uh, uh, money from the provincial and federal side, well, th that's extra money. Uh, that's going to come back into our economy here in the CBRM as well. If 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 uh, we support these small individuals to to, to be able to build that, that profile, and and if they're able, they you know to get these grants, and if they're so choose, they can spend that money here as well. Correct? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to make that clear. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. If I could ask um, for. I, I see where this conversation is going and ensuring that we have the capacity to actually administer a program like this. I know in the past we've gone to the provincial government for uh, permission to work outside of the MGA. For example, with port development, we had to get an exemption through legislation. So if there is an issue, uh, 
if we can exemplify how what kind of ask we need to go to the provincial government to, to actually facilitate this type of program like we did with port development and, and issuing permissions that way I think that would be very very helpful uh, next on your second opportunity Councillor Eldon McDonald uh, thanks very much madam mayor just make a couple of quick comments I guess I'll make a comment in regards to Councillor Gillespie's comments with the council sitting in the committee that's something I would not support um, I would support possibly staff being involved in the process, but council has sat on many boards and committees in the past and we made a decision a number of years ago uh, to take all of councillors off of those boards and committees uh, and uh, I think uh, going down that path would be the wrong way. Uh, understand the premise of what he was uh, suggesting, but I, I wouldn't be in favor of that. Um, in regards to Nelson's comments of maybe sitting in for educational purpose and learning, absolutely, uh, but uh, to sit and, and, and be part of the actual uh, decision making uh, I think would be a mistake but that's my own, my own thoughts on that um, I think maybe there's a discussion to be had with the uh, Nova Scotia Federation municipalities if this is a municipal issue maybe uh, sorry pardon me a provincial issue maybe there's an opportunity to change this provincially so that local artists artists across Nova Scotia can tap into an eight hundred thousand dollar fund as opposed to tap into a fifty thousand dollar fund might be a bigger job or task but it may be something we could work on um, and uh, my, con my caution is simply that this is one sector that we're looking to set up a $50,000 grant for. There's many sectors of various different uh, uh, established groups, organizations uh, in our municipality and, and I'm, I'm concerned about precedent setting and the cautious of that. What did this do and who comes behind and who comes behind that group and who comes behind that group. You now we had one group today. Ten years from now, we've got 15 groups, and it was 50,000 with one group, but now it's a half a million dollars or a million dollars. So, my concern is pres the president setting. I, I very much uh, respect uh, the issue paper that will come back from staff, but I would like for all of that stuff, uh, including some of the comments that uh, that uh, CFO Jennifer Campbell made in regards to uh, some of the information that has to come back there. So, thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Eldon McDonald. Next, on your second opportunity, Councillor James Edwards. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, along uh, uh, those lines, as uh, Councillor McDonald is uh, saying, uh, th this is a, uh, a huge uh, industry. The, uh, the arts community is uh, huge. And uh, uh, going back to my earlier uh, discussion with uh, Nelson there, uh, I wonder in the issue paper if it would be possible to uh, uh, provide some uh, projections uh, as to what kind of uh, revenue might be generated uh, from that. I think that would be an interesting uh, uh, component to the uh, uh, conversation here because I, I really do think that uh, uh, th this would be a very um, um, minimal uh, investment for a, a huge return and uh, perhaps we can uh, see some numbers with the uh, uh, issue paper to support that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Nelson. Did you want to respond? Uh, yeah, thanks for that. Um, you know, I was I was talking to Tyler a bit about this too, and and you know, it, the job of whoever administers this, and hopefully it's the CBRM Ren, um, will be to measure the impact as well, and follow up with artists, and and you know, as uh, Councillor, as the Deputy Mayor mentioned, um, you know, we're looking for three years at this point. You know, the idea is that in three years' time, this should be proving itself that it's working. And instead of those two success stories like Allison and Ashley, we should have new ones, right? We should have more. We'll be back here and we'll be able to say, this works, here's the evidence, right? So, so that's all we're asking for today. And, and I think, um, you know, I, I just want to center the conversation, if I could, like, uh, you know, back, back on the presentation today as much as possible and, and our ask of $50,000. It's a new, it'd be a new program for the CBRM. Yes, the CBRM's doing a lot for the arts community. You know, the guys from the CBRM are down dropping off stuff for Lumiere, every Lumiere festival, and they're doing it with a smile, right? And the Making Ways Festival is amazing, and there's lots of other great stuff. And the Savoy Theater is so important to Glace Bay and the surrounding communities, right? Um, so I think um, our ask is a modest one, and uh, I understand that, that it's bringing up a lot of other questions from you guys on the creative s sector, and I understand that, but uh, hopefully we can, we can center it back to the presentation today. Thanks, guys. Thank you. On your second opportunity, Councilor Perouche. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, Nelson, thank you for the perfect little segue there. Uh, to my colleagues to my right where we're talking about precedent setting, nowhere precedent setting sometimes can be a good thing as well as 
erring on the side of caution because not once today did we talk about uh, Wesley Golford and the, I believe it was radical access. That's precedent setting in a perfect form. Artists typically, other than us who sit around in suits all day, and suits or boots as I like to say, they think outside the box. And so sometimes precedent setting can be done in a good way. So I just, uh, I just wanted to throw in my two cents there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor O'Quinn, yep, go ahead on your second opportunity. Um, I'd just like to comment on Eldon's comments there. Um, I don't think it's as easy as just tapping into an $800,000 fund. Like, uh, that money's being used every year as it is now. What, what we're asking for today is 50000 more. So, like, even if the 800000 was available, I don't think it's as easy, even if they could uh, uh, apply for grants like uh, artists. I don't think that money's there now. We need extra money for the sector, and that's what I'm asking for today, just to make that clear. Appreciate the clarity, Councillor. I think everybody's actually used their time except Ken, so uh, any further discussion? Can I borrow your time, Ken? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor Tracy. Thanks, Mayor. I mean, uh, as I look around the table, it, it, the general consensus is that, uh, you know, everybody likes this idea. For me, it's it's a no-brainer. I mean, if I had the 50000 right now, I'd hand it over to these gentlemen. Thanks for your presentation, by the way. Um, and I did notice as well as Deputy Mayor and uh, McMullen and Councillor McDonald uh, pointed out that I've only seen one supporter from the Glace Bay area as well, but as you had mentioned, there's probably a perfect exa example of this gentleman here that uh, is a Bay boy and uh, he's presently living in Sydney. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I would love to see this, uh, this thing get off the ground and, and uh, see more people from Glace Bay and, and, and surrounding areas as well. Um, to see people thrive at something that they have a passion for is, is something that I completely understand. So yes, for sure, I'm definitely supporting this, uh, this uh, issue paper brought forward by Councillor Quinn and I look forward to, uh, to the future years of watching this, this, uh, this initiative uh, progress. Thank you very much. Whoever wants my second time, welcome to it. <laughs> just, just to, no, I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> I'm kind, but not that kind. Any further discussion? Question. Questions Question. been called. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, nay. Motion is carried. Uh, just a quick thank you again to everybody who has been involved in the process of developing this proposal. It's really wonderful to see uh, our REN as well partnering on this. Um, I don't know if, I don't want to speak for our previous council, but I, I, I don't think I ever envisioned what the REN would be doing <clears throat> necessarily. I knew it was about business development. I knew it was about creating economic development opportunity for our community. But this is, this is, this is what we see uh, as a return on investment, I, I see. You know, we do have businesses starting. We have diversification of opportunities, and I'm really glad um, to see this work happening in front of our eyes. So I just want to say thank you as well to Tyler for stepping in uh, as the creative sector guru for the partnership as well. Um, before I conclude today, I just want to add um, a couple of actions that have come out of today. Obviously, there will be um, an issue paper depicting all of the financial um, details that we require to make a final decision on the, on the money regarding this project. We, in principle, are supporting uh, wholeheartedly, unanimously, this proposal as a council. So um, excited to see the work that continues to be done by this group to create the framework necessary to see this happen as quickly as possible. Um, also, I will add one thing. Uh, our meeting with the province was uh, delayed a little bit, so we'll be heading up, I think it's the 14th of October. If it's okay with council, I'd like to add uh, this to the discussion with Minister Lore of Municipal Affairs to ask, uh, if not, how do we make this happen? If we can't do this within the MGA, how do we make that happen? So I will be sure to add that to our list. But also the comment from Councillor Elder McDonald about the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities. Um, we talk all the time, both of us sit on that board, about making it easier for municipalities to do business in their communities. And this is what we're talking about here today. So um, yeah, Eldon, between you and I, we'll also be bringing that to NSFM to have a conversation as well. Um, 
Seeing no further items on our agenda, I thank you colleagues very much for your discussion, your insight, and uh, your passion towards making your community better today. <coughs> Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>